Hallelujah. Amen. Before you sit down, please make sure that you high five five people and tell them you love them and you appreciate them and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Many things you are a holy. You know that's Pastor George's song, eh? You are the living word. for house of faith worship team amen come on let's give it up one more time for worship team house of faith amen and amen praise the lord and please make sure that you always practice that song because you know at any time it's you know you you're gonna be requested to sing that song amen amen are you excited to be the house of the lord this morning you can do better than that saints are you excited to be in the house of the lord this morning Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this another day. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to speak to us this morning. And Lord, even as you are speaking to us, I pray that we may hear the word of the Lord. I pray that that word, O oh God, may spring forth in, in the inside of us. That, Lord, we may be changed from within. I pray, Lord, that we may not harden our hearts even as we hear the word. I pray, O oh God, that we may be obedient to that word because your word is quick and active. Your word is like a mighty hammer that shuts us down the rocks. The Bible says that the entrance of this word brings forth light in the inside of us. And Lord, we know that we will never be the same again because your word is incorruptible. Your word changes us. Your word makes us better people. Your word transforms us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, this morning we receive your word with gladness. And Lord, we say, have your way in us, Lord. Have your way, oh God. Even as you teach us, even as you instruct us, even as you inspire us, even as you heal us because you said in your word, I have sent forth my word and healed them. And Father, thank you for the healing that comes even as a result of your word. Thank you for total life prosperity, nothing missing and nothing broken that comes as a result of your word. We give you the praise and we honor you this morning. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. 
Can somebody say amen and amen this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We are excited this morning to be in the house of the Lord and not only to be in the house of the Lord, but to receive a word from God. But Zalona, I just want to encourage you this morning that, you know, our fun day is coming. And that fun day is for all of us. And especially for some of us who don't always find things funny. Amen. Can I have a big amen from the men in this church here? Amen. You know, you can hear that amen. Can I have a funny amen from the men? Amen. We love our men in this church here, yeah, man. They are such amazing people. They did not go to play golf this morning. Can we just appreciate our men in this church? You know, they came. Hallelujah. We are so excited. Ladies, you know I love you, you know, uh, but, you know, for the coming months, you know, it's all about men, men this, men that, men. You know, man, I thought you were going to encourage me and say, hey, man, Pastor George, talk about us. You know, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. We love men who, you know, are so uh, uh, committed to their families and men who, you know, are really showing the path in, in many uh, uh, sectors of society. We are so grateful to have you men in this church. Amen. If there's a man next to you, just say, you know, we appreciate you, Baba. Siabonga. Baba, uze sonpe namtanje. Siabonga. Siabonga. Amen. Yeah, and don't worry, if they don't smile, that's just how men roll, you know. If he just keeps quiet and look at you like, you know, what are you saying to me now? It's okay. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to talk on the subject this morning that you don't hear it much at churches. It's a subject that many of us as preachers and especially people like me, and many people who are just like me who believe in the integrity of the word of God and you start seeing people doing certain things about, you know, uh, what I'm going to preach about today. It's, it's easy just to cower back and not talk about it. But at the same time, you know that the word of God is full of scriptures that addresses this topic. And I'm studying a new series today. It's going to take long. It's going to take long, so you might as well just buckle up. If you want to go, you know, to the gents or the ladies or whatever, you know, you're welcome to do that. Because we're going to, you know, have some bumpy moments. Can I have an amen? Even before you know what I'm going to talk about, you know, we're going to have some cruising moments. But Oksalayo, this is the word of God. Amen? And we have to talk about it. So what are you talking about, Pastor George, this morning? I want to talk on the subject, God wants you to succeed financially. Can I have a better amen? amen. If I was you, when I heard the word financially, I would be running around this building, man, amen. I would be running around and say, Lord, thank you, finally, somebody is telling me that me also, I can succeed financially or let me put it this way God is interested in your financial success God is interested in your financial success how many know in this church that money plays a very very important role where our lives are concerned how many of you in this church when you are watching television and you see 124 million rands on the Powerball, you wish that that money was in your hands. I'm fully say, raise up your hands, I know. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Abanye who are not raising up their hands, all we know, tell them, tell the, the one that didn't raise up their hand and say, I, I bo, I bo gay, I, 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 I know. I know now, ain't she? Luena. Why bata? God wants us to succeed financially. Now the question this morning is, does God really want you as a person? 
prosper financially. Because some people hear, you know, words like this and they think it's just a slogan. It's something that, you know, the pastor has to talk about, but it does not relate to them. I am here this morning under instruction from God to tell you, 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 now Gemzalwan, now sister C, now brother Boo. Come on, somebody. God wants you to succeed financially. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have a better amen? amen? Can I have an excited amen this morning? Amen. So we are going in the next, in the coming weeks, we're going to talk about what does the Bible say about it? We're going to go straight into scripture and talk about what the Bible is saying about it. Let the Bible bring forth evidence we're going to prove a case that God wants you to prosper financially. You don't have to believe what I say, but at least you can believe what the Word of God is saying. Amen? Amen. Because the Word of God is our final authority. Come on, somebody. If the Word says it, that settles it. It doesn't matter who says what. It doesn't matter what other people do. But if the Word of God says it, that settles it. Now, I want to also say that many people and many believers believe that as Christians we are to be poor. And I believe that by the grace of God in the weeks to come and even as of today that God is going to show you that that is a lie from the pit of hell. Can I have a better amen? amen. God wants you to succeed financially. There are many people that believe as a believer or as a Christian I have to be poor as a church mouse, and I don't know why they call, you know, the church mouse poor. But poverty is not the will of God for us. I said poverty is not the will of God for us. And I'm not talking about some, you know, spiritual poverty and spiritual success. or what. I'm talking about money success. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't look at me like you don't want money because I know all, all y'all in this place, like American says, all of you, that's why you're going to work. You're not going to work just for the nice part of it. Oh, Pastor George, I mean, I love my work. No, 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 no. If we want to, uh, if we want to, if we really want to see if you love your work, we, if we withdraw the salary, let's see if you're still going to go to work. Okay, let me go to Abba on the other side there. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Yeah. We all need money. We all need money. Money Money, money, money has a way, man. Money has a way. Yeah, but Pastor George, money will not bring you peace. Money will not do this. Money will not save you when this and this is happening. Money will not save you, you know, when your children are on drugs. Yes, we all, we know all of that. But money, money has a way of cleansing you. Can I have a better amen? I'm sorry. Money gives you a glow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Have you seen a politician who was just a normal, you know, an activist, a comrade, he's still at the low levels, and all of a sudden, comrade, then all of a sudden now, say a toilet position, government. Have you seen how their faces look like? So we appeal, like oh, comrade, we appeal. You know, there's something about oh, comrade. You know what was what happened from the time he was Ekas Etembi, the time now that he's in the corridors of power. It's a money factor. It's not just a power factor; it's a money factor. And it manje, you know, he's able to buy certain things. So, oh, 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 so what graduated from Ivaselina manje? Come on, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you're no longer putting it in. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. It Come on. Now all of a sudden, he's putting a product for sensitive skin. Now all of a sudden, now you're putting a product for a combination skin. You know what I'm talking about. Ladies, come on. Can I have an amen? You know, there's a product for the middle part, the T-cross or whatever. There's a product that you put. You know what happened? Money just happened to that person. 
Say amen, somebody. Amen. So money is important. So, but in many pulpits, it is taboo to talk about money. It takes a lot of courage for a preacher like me to come and talk about money, and especially in the age that we are in. Because there's, there's been a lot of charlatans. There's been a lot of manipulation in churches where money is concerned. There are a lot of people who lost their hard-earned monies in churches. And so, so that's why, you know, we have taken the time in this church here, you know, even when we came here, not to really, you know, start talking about stuff like that, even when we know, or even when I knew, that 20% of the Bible is about money, it's about wealth and lands. 20% of the Bible. It's a message that needs to be preached in churches, which other people don't like because they say, but Pastor George, church is not about money. We'll prove it from the scripture. How money is important. Can I have a better amen? amen. So, so don't, don't be, you know, listening to this message with what happened to you or, you know, uh, you know because you came from a church that, you know, they have swindled you or they have done all sorts of things. And some people were even had to be, you know, taken away from our country because they've been swindling money from people. And I know that there are preachers that preach because, you know, they want money out of your pocket. Preach on subjects like this because they want money from your pocket. But my intention and my, the instruction that I got from God is to tell you that God wants you to succeed financially. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I'm not going to be shy about it. It took a lot of courage. I kept on saying to our Wednesday service, you know, I will be preaching about this. You know, how many remember, you know, uh, Abu, 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 Mrs. Sukobi, they, they, they would hear me talk about it. I, I will preach about it. I will preach about it. But it took me some time. And here it is, Namtaj. Tell the neighbor, say, Fasten your seatbelt. We are about to take off. The truth is, when we study the word of God and rightly divide the word of truth, we see that money and financial prosperity are vital parts of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's, it's very vital. It's very important. This truth cannot change because of the wrongs that other people have done. You cannot say now that there were certain Christians that did wrong things, and therefore now in J, as a person, you don't want to be part of, you know, the church community because you have seen so many Christians doing wrong things. I've heard people say this. I've heard people say, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be part of, you know, an organized church because of Zalwananje, they're just like us. No, you're robbing yourself of something so powerful. People are not your standard. Can I have an amen? amen. I said people are not your standard. Amen. But the word of God is our standard. Can I have a better amen? amen? So this truth about God wanting us to be financially, you know, successful will not change because of the wrongs that preachers and many other people have made in the past. Technically, the gospel, or the word gospel meaning good news, will be incomplete if we do not present financial prosperity as a covenant right. I will not be preaching the full gospel if I don't, in the mix, preach about financial prosperity. The good news is that God wants you, or the gospel, the word gospel means good news, the gospel is that God wants you to prosper financially. Can I have an amen? amen. Now turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 19. Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 19. It took many years to know how to pronounce Ecclesiastes. And I know there are some people here who don't know what it is. They just say, go to E.C., Chapter 10, verse 19. 
Now, listen to what the Bible says. It says, a feast is made for laughter, and wine makes merry, but money answers anything. The other version says, money answers all things. Somebody say all things. Do you know what all things means in Greek? All things means all. All means all. All things. All things. Money answers, you know, that week that you need. Come on, somebody. You can graduate from just a normal, you know, week in Jayabantu Bonke to another level. Money has a way of taking you from La and bring you here. And when you are here, it catapults you to other places. So we hear from the word of God that money answers all things. Money answers all things. So it is in the Bible. Tell your neighbor, say, it is in the Bible. So why should we talk about money in the church? I'm going to give you 10 reasons and I'm going to get off your way. Why are we talking about money in the church? Number one, Jesus taught about money. And Jesus is our example. And I hear people say, oh, I want to be like Jesus. The apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow who? As I follow Christ. So Christ is our standard. Not Pastor George. Not, you know, uh, whoever, whoever it is. Not John. Not your friend. Not your boss, but Jesus is our standard as believers. He's our example. We have to be like him. And we have to teach what he taught. What did he teach? He taught about money. All aspects of money. How to handle money. How to, you know, uh, uh, how to not handle money. How to go about treating people when you have the money. And many, many, many other things. As a matter of fact, you need to understand that Jesus was not a poor man. I don't know where people got this thing from that Jesus was a poor man. Where do you see a poor man having a treasurer? The scripture says that Judas was Jesus' treasurer. And by the way, and I said this, that you, know, you don't have a treasurer when you have five cents. You don't hire a treasurer when you are handling a 1,000 rands. Jesus had a treasure. At some point in time, you know, uh, uh, there were many people who were gathered. The Bible says there were about 5,000 people seated in there. And G the Bible says that Jesus had compassion for them. And he said to Judas, go get, go get food for all of these people. Can you feed 5,000 people? Ka five rand. No, it takes a lot of money. I know that because we have organized events in this church. And we know how much money. One phone is again tell you how much money, you know, is here as well. They will tell you how much money we spend. So Jesus taught about money, and Jesus had money. Say amen. Ring amen. strong. Amen. Say amen, somebody. He taught about money extensively. He spoke more about money more than he did heaven and hell. You go check it out in the scripture. Jesus spoke about money more than he did heaven and hell. And I can guarantee you now, that means that money is important. Now, money is not everything in life. Listen to me. Money is not everything in life because I know people with money, but yet, you know, they are not prosperous. Because true Bible prosperity is that you need to prosper financially, you need to prosper emotionally, you need to prosper, you know, uh, uh, physically, you need to prosper relationally, and all of that. So that's true financial, that's true prosperity. That's what I call total life prosperity. Because it doesn't matter if you have a billion rands in your account and you are failing health wise. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So God wants us to have total life prosperity. But a lot of people and most believers have believed a lie that God wants me well, God wants me, you know, to have a great time. God forgave my sins and God, but when you talk about money, they say, no, 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 that's not my part. But yet, financial prosperity is part of the covenant. Can I hear an amen? Jesus taught about money. Just as the, at the start of his ministry, Jesus brings out his manifesto in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He says, listen everybody, my name is Jesus the Christ, and this is who I am. And this is how he, 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 he speaks on his manifesto. He opens up the book, the Bible says, and he finds a scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, 61, where it says, in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 to 19, it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, what did we say the gospel was? We said the gospel is good news. The word gospel means good news. Remember that. So the Bible says he preached the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the good news to a blind man? If you are to meet with a blind man, what would be the good news to a blind man? The good news will be you don't have to be blind anymore. From this day, you are going to see. That's good news for a blind man. Do you agree with me this morning? A person who's going through a lot and drama in their lives, the good news to that type of a person would be you don't have to experience this drama anymore. So Jesus says in his manifesto, he was not electionary, but this is him. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He says that this spirit of the Lord that is upon me, he has anointed me. The word anointing is the, 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 the word burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God. That's what the anointing is. So he says, I am smeared on with yoke destroying, burden removing, power of God on me. And what am I anointed to do? He says, this is what I'm anointed to do. He says, to preach the gospel to the poor. What is the good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. So Jesus says, this is what I promise. I promise that if you side with me, if you're part of my party, this is what you're going to experience. You don't have to be poor anymore. Can I have an amen in this, in this church here? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many of you say, but Pastor George, I don't want to be associated with poverty in this church. So Jesus says, that's my manifesto. This is after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. This is at the start of his ministry. He tells the people that you don't have to be poor anymore. Tell your neighbor, say, you don't have to be poor anymore. Tell your neighbor, say, poverty doesn't look good on you. Hallelujah. Did they believe you when you said that? So the Greek word, poor, the Greek word that was used there, for, that, that, that the translators, you know, used to write that verse is the word P-T-O-C-H-O-S, tochos. Tochos, this refer both to those who is financially and economically poor and those, and, and those who are spiritually poor. Because a lot of people read that verse, I'm teaching this morning, a lot of people read that verse and say, Pastor George, he was talking about spiritual poverty. Every time, and I don't know why we want to, if, when something looks too good to be true, 
we always say, but it's a spiritual poverty. No. The word used there, when Jesus spoke to the Jews, they understood what he was talking about. That's why you can't, you can't tell any Jewish person that poverty is their portion. No. No. Some of the richest people in the world today are Jews because they understand, you know, the covenant that they have with God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They understand that they have to prosper. They are to prosper. Prosperity is their portion. And there is no one that can convince them that they are to be poor. As a matter of fact, I was told that when Jewish children are raised in their families, one of the things they are told about is that, you know, you have a covenant of prosperity. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen like you want to prosper this morning financially. Amen. amen. So that word poor there, it refers both to financial poverty and it also refers to spiritual poverty, whichever way you want to put it. So in the Old Testament, the word poor, the poor, where those, when they referred to the poor in the Old Testament, it was referring to those who had no inheritance, who were financially impoverished and of low social status. God loves the poor, but he doesn't want you to remain poor forever. Say amen, somebody. People come to me and say, Pastor George, but Jesus said, the poor you shall always have. Ntambe me, I'm one of those that you shall always have. Why, when do you choose to be? Come on, somebody. You can make a choice from this week. That poverty, poverty, God wants me to prosper financially. Can I have a better amen this morning? So Jesus spoke about money. Not because he was obsessed about money. Money was not the only thing that he spoke about. Or what he wanted to have lots of. But because he knew that money was a hard issue. And that it is one of the most likely reasons for somebody not to follow him. Remember when he met with the rich young ruler. This rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he's speaking to Jesus. And Jesus says to this young man, he says, I want you to go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor. The Bible says that this young ruler went away sad. He did everything right. He said, you know, he was uh, given to, uh, he, he was, he was, he was, you know, nice to people. You know, he believed in God. He did everything. And the Bible says that Jesus looked at him and he loved him. But then he said, this one thing you lack, go sell everything and give it to the poor. Now, because money is a hard issue, a lot of people, you can, you know, you can get away with everything in their lives. But when it comes to Imali, You know what I'm talking about. When it comes to money issues, money is so powerful that it can make people to be something else. Money can make you, if your heart is not in the right place, not to come to church. You know that. I can promise, if, if a person promises you, say, 100,000, say, say, for this entire month, don't, don't just go to church. Nah, 100,000, nah. Don't go to church. I understand. I Pastor George, you know, I understand. Ah, there's nothing like that. Which is just making you to be the way you are. So that's how powerful money is. So Jesus taught about money. So you need to understand that the money you have in your wallet has no intrinsic value. It is worth what the government says it is worth. As a matter of fact, somebody said that money is essentially morally neutral and powerless. So the devil can use the very same money 
to seduce us or the devil can use the same money to do all the evil things. But also money when it's in the right hands can be a tool for the blessings of God to flow in somebody's life. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? So money in itself, the, the money in itself is, is neutral. And that's why Jesus could talk about it without any fear or favor. Number two, why do we talk about money in church? The Apostle Paul taught about money. He taught about money. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, in the New King James Version, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, there it goes again. Pastor George was talking about spiritual riches. The Bible says that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Oh, he's talking about spiritual poverty. That you through his poverty might be rich. I arrest my case. God wants you to succeed financially. The Bible says the same way that he took your sin upon himself to give you his righteousness. He took your poverty so that you can be rich. Can I have a better amen in this church? So God wants you to succeed financially. And here's the reason why I'm saying that he's not talking about spiritual richness because the context of this scripture, if you read it from verse 1, was not about spiritual riches and poverty. It was about giving to the poor and the kingdom of God. In verse 7 of this scripture, the Bible says, as much as you excel in all these other things, he says, the Apostle Paul says, I want you to excel in the grace of giving. He was talking about giving, giving to the poor and giving to the work of God and giving to the kingdom of God. That's what he was talking about. So he could not have switched from verse 7 to verse 8 and starts talking about spiritual poverty and spiritual riches. He was talking about money. Say money. Say money. That's what he was talking about. And this is how we know it, because the Greek word for rich there is the Greek word plutau, plutau, which means becoming wealthy and increasing in material goods. God wants you to be wealthy and increase in your material goods. Now, NJ, that's your purpose. You're going to, go, you're going to work. Because you want to live in a better place. Can I have an amen? You're going to work because you want your life to be better. Can I have a better amen? You're going to work because you know you want, you know, the situation you had when you were growing up different now. I'm talking to black people here who know what it is, you know, to eat, uh, you know, to, to eat in Komazi for three days nonstop. Ne papa. That's why a lot of people now, they say, I meet with a lot of people, say, Pastor George, I, I can't eat pap anymore. And I ask them the reason why you need eating. They say, I, I've eaten it too much. I, I, I. So we are called. Now you're working hard. You know why you're working hard? You're working hard because now you want something different. You want couscous now. Come on. Come on, somebody. You want something different. You want pasta. You know you couldn't eat pasta when you were growing up here. Don't look at me like when you were eating abuma pasta, abuma, abuma couscous when you were growing up. You know you were on pap full time. Say amen, somebody. Amen. To the point that, <laughs> some of us grew up in very interesting. To the point that, you know, when there was no bread at home, you would take the same pap. Am I the only one in this church? Take the same pap, you put it on a on coals and roast it so that it becomes a bit brownish. And then you find at that time you also don't have, uh, you don't have tea. So what happens, you take sugar. Come on, somebody. Now I'm teaching young people now how to survive. You take sugar, you put it in a teaspoon. Then there's fire underneath. 
or a primer stove. Then it burns the teaspoon. Then the sugar turns in front of you to become black. Then you take that, you put it in the, in the hot water, and then you put sugar food. But the white one, not the black one this time around. And then you drink your tea. Come on, somebody. Can I have an amen to, from those who know what I'm talking about this morning? I was saying to my wife, I said, you know, if, 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 the, if, if stuff happens here in South Africa, let's say there's war, there's what, what, and things are not working and all kinds of things. I said, Mina, Mina I'm going to survive. I'm a survivor. I said, what I, I know what I'm talking about. I said to her, I said, I'll put Peño here. I'll, I'll get to Melo, and then we're walking. See, I or wherever it is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I know, I know, I'll pass in a bomb spirit, and I'll pass more compact. You know, when I pass in there, we know where to go. We know what to do. There are times when we will sleep in awkward places. Even if there's no bed, if we go to a family and there's no bed, I know what it is to sleep down. I know what it is to sleep. When I say sleep down, I'm not talking about this sponge. I'm just talking about stupu, stupu plus your blanket. Come on, somebody. So, he is saying in this scripture, yet for your sakes, he became poor. And that word poor, I told you, is becoming, he became poor so that you can be rich. Rich means becoming well and increasing in material goods to have abundance and have these possessions and you know why God wants you to have these possessions oh Pastor George I know he wants me you know to to, to, to help the, the, the church and to, to be a blessing to the kingdom of God correct but also the Bible says he wants you to enjoy it. Tell him, say, oh, I, God wants me to enjoy stuff. <laughs> you, you don't know what I'm talking about. God wants you to enjoy life. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. God likes it when you smell good because now, now you, you have graduated, DJ, from shield. Come on. <laughs> to pack up. Pack or whatever. Hmm? God loves it. That's why when that woman came with an expensive perfume and he was, he was, he was putting on Jesus' feet, Jesus didn't say, hey, 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 go and sell it. No, he says, leave this woman alone. Leave this woman alone. She's doing the right thing. And she put that perfume and in that room, it was smelling nice. Apparently, that perfume costed lots of money. Number three. Why do God want... Why do we teach about money? We teach about money because one-fifth of the Bible is about wealth, riches, land, and prosperity. Bible scholars actually calculated that 20% of the Bible speaks about those things that I've just said. So not teaching about it at House of Faith, not teaching about it as a pastor, not teaching about money, it will be leaving a significant portion of what the Bible talks about. It will be leaving a significant portion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen? In Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, Then Abram went up from Egypt, and he and his wife and all that he had, and Lord with him, to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Say Abraham was very rich. Say Abraham was rich. Was very rich. Now some people are here, yeah, but Pastor George was not rich in money. Now you need to understand that the, 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 the medium of exchange back then was not dollars and rents. So if we were rich in livestock and all these things, you were a rich man. As a matter of fact, you know, some of you who are a little older, you would know that uh, when people uh, go to pension, 
Bacon la Bazar, Awanya Bazaron, la where I'm going to pension, you would hear things like, I'm going to buy three cows. Why are you buying three cows? I'm going to buy cows, I'm going home, I'm going to do this and that. You know why people buy cows sometimes? They buy cows because they believe cows are investment and is money. It's a sign of money. I know some of you are here, you know, you are ready, you're about to go to pension, Shumera Venda, Riko Shumera Venda. You know, you want to go and buy cows so that you can go back home in the, in the, in the villages. Say amen, somebody. Do I have my Limpopo people in this place here? Yeah, you, you'll have to forgive me because I know a lot about you from Limpopo here than any other grouping of people. Amen? God calls Abram. And then he says to Abram, Blessing, I will bless you. That was in chapter 12. He calls Abram. Abram was a worshiper of the moon. Abram did not know this God. And the promise that this God gives to Abram is that I will bless you. The word blessing is an empowerment for you to prosper. To prosper in every area of your life. So one of the things that God was saying to Abram, was saying to Abram, was saying, you know, Abram, I'm going to, you know, empower you to be wealthy you know, with cattle and all of these things. That, that's what God was saying. He says, I'm not an unfair God. I'm a God who has a manifest, a manifesto. And my manifesto is when you are with me, you know, you are going in the path of prosperity. Can I have an amen? So that's what he tells Abram. So if God made Abram rich and you are the seed, come on somebody, of Abraham, and you go around saying Abraham's blessings are mine, then you have no business in saying God does not want me to be successful. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Am I preaching to the right people in here, in the right crowd in this church here? Am I preaching to people that say, Pastor George, bring some more of this financial stuff? Naming a fool. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, and Abraham, the Bible says, one time he stood up and he says, let no man say that he has made Abraham rich. Let no man take the glory. He says, God made me rich. He was telling his generation, he was telling his people, he said, hey, listen, everybody, you see all of this cattle, you see all of these camels, you see everything that I have, he says, Nobody gave it to me but God. And God wants you to be rich so that you can also tell somebody that, hey, listen, everybody, you know, it's not so and so. It's not me knowing the right people. It's not me being in the right spaces. It's not me, you know, working the right job. God made me rich. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Tell a neighbor, say, God made you rich. Some people say, oh, yeah, 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 we hear that, but I'm not Abraham, Pastor George, but you are Abraham's seed. If you're born again, you are Abraham's seed. Can I have an amen? amen. Galatians 3, 29. I told you that I'm going to give you, I'm going to let the word of God be the evidence. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Say amen, somebody. Number four. Number four, money, why do we talk about money? Money is the medium of exchange for everything this side of heaven. Money is the medium of exchange here on earth. How I wish I can, you know, exchange my goodness, then I, you know, then I have the house, then I have the car, then I have all of these things. No, if you want things to roll, what makes them roll? The Bible says money answers everything. Whatever goods and services you may need in this life, you will need money for it. Everything we, we see around here is money. It required money for you to have it. Your dress, your jersey, your cap, your you know, spectacles, you know, my shoes, this thing here, my cell phone, 
everything, money, 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 money. What this young man is playing here, money. What he is having in his ears, money. What he's having in front of him, money. For him to glow, money. The haircut, money. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. So money is the medium of exchange for everything this side of heaven. Number five. We exchange our lives for money. What do I mean by that? We spend more time at work than we do with our families. We spend a lot of time, you know, at work more than we do with our friends and loved ones. We spend more time working to earn a salary. That means we are exchanging our lives for money. The amount of time you're spending at work trumps the amount of time you're spending with your wife or with your kids or with your loved ones. And you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, even when you go home, you're still working. You know why you're working? Because you want lowly. You want this. Some of you, you know, even when you get married, you don't even care how he looks as long as he has this. <laughs> Come on, somebody, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, Pastor George, it doesn't matter how he looks. I, it doesn't matter how he looks. That's why you see, I'm a blesser. I'm a blesser. Uh, they get anyone they want. They just come in a place like this. Um, Zalwana, za. Who is in the church like this? And a blesser comes. And is driving a G-Wagon outside. Atugu, sis. Hey, sister, hi. Praise the Lord, sister. <laughs> I think that's what they do. Praise the Lord, sister. I'm not sure if you are. Are you are you looking for? Are you looking for transport? You are looking everywhere. Yeah, no, no, I'm waiting for my friend to come and pick me up from church. The church is over. At no ngawar, And then he tells you, you know, I know I'm not a church person. I know I'm not a church person. But I understand that it's on doing it. you guys give money and all kinds of things. Hey, let my little be there. And then he opens the cabion of the and then at we born. I'm at 200. At. All of it. And all of a sudden he takes your number. The next thing you know, you know, it doesn't matter how he looks or whatever. At that time, you don't even know, you don't even remember how he looks. You remember. You know what I'm talking about, you remember that. He's speaking to you. <laughs> you know, in the evening, even when you're sleeping, ah! Oh, he's a con. Oh, yeah. Money. Don't be looking at me like you don't want it. You know what I'm talking about. Some of us have suspended our hobbies and we have suspended us, you know, doing the work of God. You know why? Because we are out there chasing after money. Because money, you know, is, is, is that, the, the reason why we have to preach about it is because people are exchanging their lives for money. Number six, the lack of money contributes to the social ills in society. Marriages are affected because of lack of money. By Allah, they are fighting. What kind of a husband are you? People are waking out there. What kind of husband are you? It's because the money is not there. Let the money flow. Hey, honey. <laughs> All right. I was just thinking about you the whole day. I don't know why. I don't know what got into me. But you know, you're the. Ay, 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 ay. Cut the fluff. Money. We have broken marriages because of lack of money. We have starvation. You know, you go to Ethiopia, you go to all these other countries. People are starving today because of lack of money. Don't you ever tell me that money is not important. 
when kids are not eating because they don't have money. So don't tell me that poverty is a blessing. Poverty is not a blessing. It's not the will of God for those kids to have flies all over their, their, their mouths and people are struggling. All these social ills. Money is not the only contributing factor to the social ills of society. You know, before you say, oh, but Pastor George, there are other things. I know there are other things, but money also is in the equation. Starvation, crime. People are stealing today because of money. Corruption, it's happening because you know what people are wanting? People are wanting money. We have a country right now that is experiencing so many challenges and, you know, a, a country that if we, you know, if we were well off, all of us, you know, I know we would not necessarily take away the entire corruption because, you know, it's also a, a question of greed, but at least it will also come down. Police are taking it, Jojo, because they are not having enough of it. Ubanbani want the cold drink from you. That cold drink, they call it cold drink, it's not cold drink, it's money. From you. Because of this thing called money. And we have to talk about it. I have to preach about it. Diseases and frustrations that are leading people to suicide are some of the direct and indirect consequences of lack of money. Number seven, money is a tool it's a means to an end. Money is an amplifier. It can amplify the work of God, which is good, and it can also amplify the work of the devil. Have you realized that people with lots of money who are gangsters, they are doing all the wrong things and they get away with it? You know why? Because they bribe the police. They bribe this one, they bribe this one. People are just in the palm of their hand because of money. And yet the very same money can be used to reach to the nations. We can populate heaven and plunder hell, you know, when we just have the money. Imagine if we had all the money in the world. You know, we would be having air conditioning in this building here. We would be having the right lights. We will be having beautiful screens at the front here. We will be having all the other things that the worship team have been asking me about. You know, we will be having a lot of things that Sitch Rachel needs in the children's church. We'll be having a whole lot of things and paving and all sorts of things in this church if the money was just there. Because money is important. Now, some people don't even come to church because this place is too hot, Pastor George. You know, it's too hot. So don't tell me that money is not important. Some people are going to, you know, churches that have got everything in there because money made it possible. So money can become a tool that we can love people with and love God with. So money, listen to this, money takes the nature of the person who is using it. If you're a good man, that money is going to be good, man. But if you're a bad man, that money is going to be bad. Number eight, the work of God costs money. Tell anybody, say the work of God costs money. Listen to this statement here. I'm about to close. The gospel is free. How many agree with that? The gospel is free. We don't charge for the gospel. So you have never come in here and I'm standing there at the door and say, let time man. No. Gospel is free. But the pipeline to minister the gospel and take it to the world. You see, we say in this church, we proclaim the kingdom of God, you know, and we impact the, the world. We talk about impacting the world. How do you impact the world if you don't have money? So money is important where the work of God is concerned. <clears throat> the work of God costs money. To minister the gospel here at House of Faith, we need the equipment, we need the electricity, the lights on. If the electricity is not there, we need a generator. Rates and taxes must be paid here. Water, salaries of people that are working here at the church. If we are to impact the world, like our vision say, we need money for the resources required. Number nine, the wealth and the earth is owned by God and it is created for us. Psalm 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord's 
and its fullness. The world and those who dwell in it. So the Bible says the wealth and the earth and everything is owned by God. And this God also owns the money. And if you're his child, you have to have it as well. Say amen. See, there's, there's another scripture that just came in my heart now. I know I didn't give it to the guys. It's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. It says, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. It says, he gives you the power to get wealth. He's the one that gives you the power to get wealth. That power is not from the devil. He gives you the power to get wealth. Now, number 10, which is the last one. I know my time is gone. Number 10, poverty is not from God. I said that to you. Poverty is not from God. So if it's not from God, why do you take it? Why do you take it? Why do you take it? You have no business in being there. And I know that, you know, many of you might be saying, but Pastor George, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. And I, and I understand all of that. That's why we're teaching it. That's why we're teaching it so that, you know, you can come off from that position and then you can come to the position that God you know, wants you to be at. Can I have a better amen? Did you receive something out of this teaching this morning? Amen. Did you receive something out of this teaching this morning? Amen. amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a big shout of praise this morning. I want you to say God is interested in my financial success. Tell a neighbor, say God is interested in me prospering Financially, say, I declare and I decree that money is my portion, riches and wealth is my portion. Say this, say, say, God gives me the power to get wealth. Now, do this say, money comes to me now. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Money is your portion. And when I say money, I'm not just talking about 10 rents. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking about millions. Can, can, I, can I have some millionaires shouting in this place? I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about billionaires in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about trillionaires in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the praise and we honor you this morning. We thank you for this teaching this morning and I pray that let this word be revelation to many of these your people. I pray that Lord they may take this word and run with it. Run with it because it is a word of God for us. And we know that one word from God will change our lives forever. And Father I pray in the name of Jesus that we may not allow the dictates of the devil who tells us that we don't deserve the money. We don't deserve to get into the money flow. Father, we reject that type of thought. We reject everything that says we are to stay poor. But instead, we know that the Bible says that you became poor so that we can be rich. And we therefore, right now, this morning, declare that we are rich in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We give you the praise and we give you the honor. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed. If you are here this morning and say, Pastor John, I hear you talking about money and money, 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 money. But I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Maybe you're sitting there and you say, you know what? I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to be born again. Yes, I go to church, but I know that there's something missing. There's a hole in the inside of me that can only be filled by Jesus. So this morning, if you know that you don't have a relationship with Jesus. I'm not talking about knowing about Jesus, but I'm talking about having fellowship and relationship with Jesus. This morning, you can accept him. And if you accept him, he will come and he will dine with you. The Bible says he's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. If any one of us opens up our door, he will come and dine with us. So this morning, you can do yourself a favor of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, this Jesus that I'm talking about, who taught about money, he wants to bless you. He wants to not only just bless you financially, but he wants to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. So that when you die here, you know that you will spend eternity in heaven. Not only is he going to prosper you, but you know that you will also, you know, see heaven. So this morning, if you are here and you say, Pastor George, please pray for me. 
I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Raise up your hand wherever you are. I want to pray with you. I can see that hand. God bless you. I can see another hand. God bless you right here. Raise up your hand. There's another hand right there. Hands are going up everywhere. Don't be ashamed. Jesus died for you publicly. You can receive him publicly. Now, at this time, I'm going to ask the congregation to stand up on our feet. Everybody, you can just stand up on our feet. And I'm going to ask those that have raised up their hands to please come and meet me right here at the altar. Everybody, I saw hands going up everywhere. Brother, come. Come, sister, come. I saw hands going up. Those that are standing on the other side, come. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. Come and stand right there and face me. Just stand right there and face me. Come. Come, everybody. Those who have raised up their hands. Come on, house of faith. Come on, house of faith. Come on, house of faith. Let's get excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only did Jesus die on the cross so that you can prosper financially, but Jesus died on that cross so that he can wash of your sins. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Come on. Come on. The Bible says, for God, for God so loved you, for God so loved me, that he gave his only son, Jesus, his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believes on him should not perish. Jesus died on that cross. Such a terrible death. But he was dying so that you and I can live. He died so that we can live. So the only thing we got to do is receive that love and receive him as Lord and Savior. So today you made one of the greatest decisions of your life. This decision is bigger than money. This decision is bigger than anything that anyone can give you. The decision to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And many years ago, many years ago, when I was 17 years of age, I did exactly the same thing that you did. And so you are right at the right place at the right time with the right decision right now in the name of Jesus. So this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to pray for you. All right. So as I pray for you, I'm asking you to raise up your hands to heaven. Raise up your hands as a sign of surrender. So when you raise up your hands, you're saying, Lord, I'm surrendering my life to you. So congregation, please also you can raise up your hands wherever you are. And I'm going to pray a prayer. As I pray this prayer, I want you to follow after me and pray with me. Is that okay? And then after this prayer, the Bible says, you will be saved. Are you ready? Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, to die for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for accepting the challenge to die for me. Today, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus died and rose again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me and making me a brand new person. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now that you have prayed that prayer, the Bible says you are saved. You are born again. And if it happens, if it happens, and God forbid, but if it happens that you pass on in the next day, two days, five years, or whatever, you know where your destination is going to be. You're going to see heaven. You're going to be with Jesus. You're going to be with Jesus. You're going to spend eternity with him. In Jesus' name, say amen. I'm going to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for these, your people. I thank you for what they have. I thank you for the decision that they've made. And Father, strengthen them, guide them, lead them. In Jesus' name, even as they walk this path, in Jesus' name, I pray. Come on, somebody say amen and amen. Now, now this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. On your right, which is my left, there's a man there standing. His name is Sepang. Sepang is going to take you to a place where it's going to give you some material. That material is going to help you. Now that you're born again, what next? He's going to pray for you. He's going to do some things with you there, you know, and it's going to be wonderful. So if you don't mind, you can just turn to your right, which is my left, and follow after that man. He's going to take you to a place of prayer. House of Faith, can we just get excited one more time? If you can just go there. 
we just go there. Somebody. Come on, somebody. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise up your hands to heaven as I speak a blessing upon your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace now and forevermore. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Come on, somebody say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, there will be ministry up front here. If you want to be prayed for, you're welcome to come in here. Those of you who are visiting us for the very first time, please see uh, Sister Rejo, who is raising up her hand there next to the visitor's lounge. We want to give you some things to drink, you know, because we love visitors in this church.